There are many people aren't at the grand final. They'll be watching from the comfort of their couches. It's a good day to do that. Stay inside and stay warm. But there's lots of D scarves out and about here in Port Melbourne. Coming up next, I'm catching up with one of the most loved demons of all time. Brad Green will be joining us shortly to tell us his thoughts on the grand final tonight. I'll see you in half an hour. Mm. I'm proud. Go Dees. Yeah, showing you true colours there finally. <laughs> Now that you're in safe territory. <laughs> Thanks, Loss. Well, Australian women have lost more jobs than men, almost 8% at the peak of the pandemic, compared to 4% for men. Yeah, enter Jobs Academy, a free membership program designed to support women in the search for employment. And here to explain more, Helen McCabe from Future Women and Nine's very own Davina Smith oh. is about to return to work from maternity leave. And a little rosy posy oh, and hope and there as well. <laughs> love, love you to see. You. Helen, tell us more about Jobs Academy. Thank you, um, and it's great to be here. Yes, it's something that we set up um, just about two weeks ago. We opened for expressions of interest, and I'd urge anyone who's listening today to, to go on to futurewomen.com and to sign up. But it is a free program. Uh, it in, entitles women who are underemployed out of work or looking for new work uh, to come on board the Future Women um, site and avail themselves of all the training and opportunities that we offer already to our premium members. So lots of different training opportunities. But the bit about it that's really different and special is that we'll connect underemployed women to real jobs. So we have a bunch of employers ready to go who are looking for diverse candidates and there can be anything from older women to women who have been marginalised in any way and we're going to talk to Devena in a second um, about her association with the Gidget Foundation but it's an opportunity for women who for whatever reason have struggled to get back into work and we know of course that during the pandemic and as you said in your introduction uh, that was a real issue for women in this country so Absolutely. It offers training, opportunities to network, meet other people and connect with real jobs that organisations have now because there's actually a skills shortage. So there are real opportunities available. Great. Yeah, how difficult is it for women to get back into the workforce? Look, I think it's incredibly difficult for some women. Uh, there's a whole range of reasons for that. But we know that taking time out to have children uh, is an incredibly busy time. And for some women, it's quite stressful. And there are all sorts of mental health challenges and the mental load that go along with having children. And it depends on how long women are out of the workforce, but it doesn't actually really matter. It can be quite unsettling, uh, even if it's only a few months. But when the pandemic hit, you found women were the first people either to give up work because of the pressures at home or the first to be find that, that they had their hours reduced or, as I say, choose to reduce their hours. And that can really knock women around in terms of their confidence and resilience and their preparedness to go back into the workforce. So what we're saying is that there's a skill shortage. Uh, we know unemployment's down to around 4%, that we want women back into the workforce. We know the federal government, and I just want to say this is a program that we've done in conjunction with the Office of Women and the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. They want to see more women in the workforce, uh, but it's really tricky for some women to find a pathway back in. And you know yourself, if you go onto a jobs site looking for work, it can be incredibly confusing and difficult yeah. to navigate. And we're saying we'll take the hard work out of it for you, help you navigate your way back into real jobs. Yeah, great, great setup, Helen. Congratulations. Davina, it's lovely to see you, I've got to say. Yeah. Uh, you're about to return to work after your second beautiful bub. It looks absolutely <laughs> adorable there. Um, and how, sleeping. How, diff Yay. <laughs> how difficult is it uh, coming back after maternity leave? Oh, Dickie, um, you heard of the midlife crisis. My mm. friends and I call it the mat leave crisis, <laughs> where at some point when you have a baby or you're on leave or you're coming back to work and you have this meltdown, you think, how am I going to make this work? And I know for me, I was really, really lucky. I was coming back to a job that I loved, that was fulfilling, that was flexible, that worked for me and for my family. And even then, five years ago, I found myself in tears every second day, whether I was uh, pumping at work, uh, expressing milk, or we'd had a bad night the night before and no sleep. And I just felt like I wasn't coping. And bit by bit, it got better. But I really do feel for women at the moment, I've got pregnant friends, friends who've just had babies, who have got all that that stress and then you throw the pandemic on top of it um, their jobs that they left a couple of months ago aren't the jobs they're going to come back to whether mm. they're working from home now or their hours have been cut or they don't have a job at all or their partners lost their job and they're being forced back to work sooner than expected and I know as someone who went through postnatal anxiety and depression 
for me, in the short term, getting back to work was really, really hard. But in the long term, it was part of my recovery. And that's why the Gidget Foundation is part of this program that Future Women and Helen have set up, because they know how important it is for women as, as part of their recovery and to avoid postnatal anxiety and depression to, to get a bit of themselves back. And that means, if possible, getting back to work. And having worked alongside you, Davina, and you talking so openly about not coping, we look at you and um, we all think that you're a Wonder Woman, don't we? <laughs> and, <so we're... laughs> and that's half the problem, So I think we yeah. all look at um, other women and we think, oh, they're doing it so well, why can't I yeah, do that? Yeah, they've got it together, yeah. And we all don't. We're all having meltdowns behind the scenes yeah. <laughs> and trying to cope. And that's why the Job Academy is so fabulous because I've certainly had a lot of friends who have wanted to change careers or upskill while they're on maternity leave and can't do that because they're trying to keep tiny humans alive. Um, but the other really important thing about the pandemic I've found is we've blown up this notion of jobs should be a Monday to Friday, 9am to 5am thing. The next thing we need to blow up is this idea that women should uh, work like they're not mothers and mother yeah. like they don't have careers because the two aren't separate entities. They overlap. You can't do both 100% 100% of the time. Something's got to give. Yeah. Well, we, yes, are, we are so, so excited to have you back in the newsroom. Yes, and, Helen, well done I'm you. I'm excited to get back. Well done, yeah. Helen. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you soon. Hope's giving us the wind up. <laughs> <Wind up there. laughs> <laughs> see you both. Very hey, let's get back to... And bye-bye, bye-bye, Rosie, too. She's looking beautiful. Let's head back to Princess Rose. Back to back at the MCG. Look, I, and, guys, I can...